MVP stands for Model View Presenter. It's a design pattern for GUI development that is especially useful for GWT. This short presentation is based on several from Google I.O. in 2009 and 2010 and personal work and investigation. Your web GUI is going to have four main portions. The presentation state, that is the data to be displayed and manipulated. The rendering logic, which formats the data for display. The display itself, which takes care of interaction with the browser and is more difficult to test because it needs a browser or a browser emulator. To test this, you need to use a GWT test case. The UI event handling logic, which responds to events generated by the display and modifies the state. Let's look first at how MVC, Model View Controller, divides this up. The presentation state is the model. The rendering logic and display together become the view, and the UI event handling logic is the controller. Now MVP. As in MVC, the presentation state is the model. However, the view includes just the display code. The rendering logic and UI event handling code are now included in the presenter component. The big advantage for GWT is that the amount of difficult to test code that requires a browser is greatly reduced because the view is now a lot stupider. If you find your view includes a lot of conditional logic, it's probably not right. So how is this actually implemented? Let's follow the interactions in a simple example. From entering the URL to showing the first screen. Now the communication diagram for showing how those pieces fit together. GWT calls the onModule load method in your entry point class when the bootstrapping process is finished. At this point, you create a new app controller and call its go method, passing it the area of the screen that it is going to manage. Generally, this is the root panel. The app controller is responsible for interaction with the history bookmark system and the overall high level flow of the application. It determines which is the first view to be displayed and creates an instance of it. Views are cached and reused because, as they involve DOM manipulation, they can be expensive to create. Next, the app controller creates a corresponding presenter and passes it the view. Presenters are not reused as they are cheap. The arguments to, arguments to the constructor are the values that are common to all instances of that class. The presenter calls reset on the view, because it might be reusing a cached one, and passes itself to the view. The view is going to need a reference to the presenter to be able to call it to informative events. After the new presenter has been constructed, the app controller calls init so that the presenter can do any initialization, such as making RPC calls that it needs to. The arguments to the init method are values that vary from presenter instance to presenter instance. Finally, the app controller calls go on the presenter and passes it the area of the screen, the container, that it is to manage. The presenter calls clear on the container to remove any view that it might currently be set and uses as widget to get the GWT widget that represents the view and adds it to the container. Sometime later the RPC call returns and the presenter uses the data it provides to set the appropriate values in the view. This pattern is easy to test. Define the view as an interface and create a mock. Then so long as you don't call go on the presenter, no DOM related code is invoked and a simple JUnit test works. This is why the init method is needed and why it's important that all the presenter's go method does is hook up the view. Now for event handling. If I click on the fourth entry in the list, I should transition to the edit view for that data. Let's look at the communication diagram for this interaction. The user clicks on an item in the list and the view calls on item clicked in the list presenter. When we look at the classes involved, we'll see how interfaces are used to reduce the coupling here. The list presenter calls edit item on the app controller. In Google, the in the Google expression of MVP, this is communicated using, using an event bus. As we'll see later, this version uses a different technique. From this point on, the flow is the same as the static, for example. Get an edit view by creating a new one or reusing a cached one. Create a new edit presenter, which calls reset and set presenter on the view. Call init on the presenter, which calls the RPC service, and finally call go, which gets the widget for the view and adds it to the container. Later, the RPC call returns, and the presenter uses set methods to display the values. As you can see, the app controller is responsible for navigating between the different views. Now, let's look at some of the classes involved. 
The view interface is very simple. It just defines an as widget method. A particular view is more complex. The class of object the view is displaying is provided as a type parameter. If the view displays data from multiple objects, which should be less common, multiple parameters can be used. This is done so that the view does not need to have access to the internals of the object it is displaying. A separate rendering class is used to produce the HTML needed for the list items. An inner interface defines the methods that the view expects to be able to call on the presenter. These are the methods that will be called in response to events caught by the view. This means that the view does not require access to the actual presenter implementation class. Defining both the methods that the view provides and the methods that it is expected to be provided with in this one place gives us a single location for all the interactions the view requires. The setPresenter method takes an instance of this inner interface as its argument. The data to display is provided by a series of set methods. As a side note, presentation states such as which items are selected should not be maintained in the view. The implementation of the view retains the type parameter. Here UI binder is being used to create at least some of the UI. All presenters require a go method. Any init method will vary from presenter to presenter. The list presenter itself implements the presenter interface and the inner list view presenter interface. The implementation specifies what type will appear in the list. The collaborations interface defines the methods that the presenter will need to be able to communicate with things outside itself. Here we have the edit item method. The list presenter does not know what, implement what implements edit item, but in contrast to the use of event bus, it's very simple to see what the connections between the objects are. I'm sure we've all seen applications that make heavy use of event handling that become difficult to maintain because of the difficulty of tracing the, the, the communication between the objects. The presenter holds onto the collaborations in the view. The constructor will include at least these as the parameters. Finally, some links for more information. There are three great presentations from Google I.O., two tutorials, and some example source code that I put together based on the um, Google I.O. Part 2 MVP tutorial. Thank you.